Nothing says the end of the year like extreme sports, good summer movies, and bloopers. The year's ending, so might as well end it with a good Sun Weekly Review. I'm Jack Leinwand, and this is the Sun Weekly Review. What is the most extreme sport? Skiing? Hunting? Cricket? Well, have you ever heard of free diving? How long can you hold your breath? 30 seconds? A minute? Two minutes? Well, can you imagine holding your breath for up to five minutes and diving down to depths of over 200 feet? Free diving is a technical sport that pushes your body to the limit. In free diving, rather than using a scuba tank, you rely on your ability to hold your breath. This sport requires you to hold your breath for a long period of time before resurfacing. Free diving is the oldest and purest form of diving. People use their free diving skills for spear fishing and even treasure hunting. In spear fishing, the diver must take one breath, dive down long enough to find a fish, shoot it, and then resurface. Treasure hunters also use their skill of free diving to receive objects from the sea floor. Sadly, there are also many dangers in free diving. Some of these dangers include sharks, LMC, also known as lost motor control, blackouts, extreme currents, possibly drowning. Lost motor control is when you have a partial loss of mental integrity and often occurs 15 seconds after reaching the surface. The reason it happens is because there's not enough oxygen in your brain and muscles, which causes your muscles to stop functioning properly. Around 100 people die each year from pushing their limits in this extreme sport. Breathe. 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 Just drop it, dude. Not worth it. Drop it. There is one technique that is best for going further and conserving as much energy and oxygen as possible in one dive. While on the surface, you put as much oxygen as possible in your lungs. You use the technique known as diaphragmatic breathing. It packs your lungs with air in all three sections, making it possible to stay down as long as you can. The proper method used for breathing while freediving would be the method known as diaphragmatic breathing, where you breathe up for a majority of the time using the bottom two thirds of your lungs. And then right before you dive down, you do two big breaths, filling not only the two thirds, but as well as the extra one third. Before heading out, always make sure you know the proper safety for all emergencies. Always dive with a buddy. Always dive with a dive fly. Make sure somebody knows how to revive someone from a blackout or even lost motor control. As you can see, free diving is a very, very dangerous sport and extreme sport. If you're going to go out there, make sure to be safe and have fun. Paper has a lot of uses, but what's the best way to use it? Paper boats, of course, but how can we make a paper boat? First, you fold the paper in half from top to bottom like this. Make sure you crease the edges. Next, fold the paper in half across like this. Crease the edges again. Then. Unfold the fold you just made, like shown. Fold the top right corner into the middle so it lines up with the middle as shown. Fold the top left corner into the middle just like the step before. Now you will see two flaps below the folds. Fold the top one up, as shown. Make sure to crease the edge. Flip the paper over and do the same with the other flap.
Now fold the corners of the paper into the triangle, like this, on both sides. And do that for the other side too. Now you want to pick up the paper and you want to open it like this and fold it down as shown. Now take one tip of it and fold it up to the top. Flip the paper over and do the same to this side. Open the paper like this and pull the corners out. This is a tricky step, so you may have to watch it again. But as you pull it out, you want to push just a little in, as shown. Just keep molding it until you got it. Then fold, fold the boat in half, like this. Make sure to crease the edges. Now take your boat and open the bottom a little. Now you have a paper boat. It's the end of the Thermically Review. Yep, you're right. This is the last Thermically Review ever. They're not coming back next year. And trust me, we've made a lot of mistakes. Even me, I've made mistakes. Carl? Carl's my son. Carl, I love Carl. Carl's dead. Is Carl there? Why not? Go. You have to ask. And Dune's like, oh, who's like Carl? Then? I have to ask. Yes, yeah, but we're doing the scene, you googin. Who's Carl? What are you doing? Come Did on, you just see that? The end of books is near! Or is it? In the media center, there was a book fair where students could buy the books they liked and wanted to read. Books are starting to become extinct as kids are constantly on their personal devices. Students could also buy posters of their favorite actors or of their favorite soccer players. The students' favorite parts of the book fair were... I like the books and reading all the books I learn information. Teachers are very involved with the students and love helping them. My favorite thing about the book fair is um, helping students find some books they'll enjoy reading over the summer. As students read books, their vocabulary and grammar skills increase. My favorite book is Believe It or Not because I can see like really weird things in there. Two of the most popular books um, that have been really popular this year is The Rat and The Compound. I have not read The Raft, but it's about a girl who, um, you know, is in an airplane crash and is um, stuck on the raft in the Pacific Ocean. And The Compound is um, a story there's um, supposedly a nuclear attack and um, a boy with his family has to live down in a nuclear bunker, but then the boy starts finding out things don't seem to match up with everything. They're both really um, exciting. Students can browse through a large selection of books from fast-paced action books to funny comedy books. I recommend Through My Eyes, it's a summer reading book for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, and I was on the summer reading committee, and I um, recommended this book. The book fair was an amazing success, and by the end of summer, kids will understand the importance of books. Books. We all love them. 
mm, or hate them. Some are good, some are great. My name's Chris Kyle. I live in Texas and I want to fight for my country. If I need to, I will put everything and everyone before me, even if it takes my own life. Iraqi insurgents call me Al Shatain because they fear me. Never look back at the people that I killed, I only look back on the men that I couldn't save. I spend a lot of time out of America. In fact, I've been in four tours in Iraq. Marnie is a 13 year old girl who has just overheard her mom and grandma saying she is a witch. Marnie chases her grandma and discovers a secret world called Halloween Town, where witches and warlocks live everyday lives. She and her family must try to defeat the evil Calabar. Will she defeat Calabar? Mr. Placido's seventh grade classes had to do an explanation about a propaganda poster. Let's go into a more in-depth explanation about it. Students are analyzing propaganda posters from the Allied or Axis powers during World War II and they're comparing them to try and see how does propaganda influence society? How the imagery and the kind of jokes or wordplay in the messages um, was intended to reach a certain audience and then evaluate whether that um, poster was effective in, in persuading people to action. Very challenging, so it can place a little bit of stress on the students, but overall we've been having a fun time. Um, a lot of the students enjoy the more humorous posters and they have a good time browsing through all of them. Different groups took different amounts of presentations. Um, some students were able to begin presenting their work after only um, three and a half school days of work, um, plus a weekend of a little bit of homework on it. Um, most students' projects took roughly um, four to five days to complete. There are a lot of good movies coming out this summer, but which ones are you going to see? Are you ready for summer? Are you prepared for explosions, pitch perfect singing, and plenty of sci-fi goodness? Well, this is our blockbuster movie premiere. You just go and you don't look back. My whole life I prepared my son to lead humanity Terminator Genesis. the machines. Arnold Schwarzenegger's back, everyone. But he's a good guy, helping people take down what he wants to destroy as the Terminator. out. Jurassic World, the movie about dinosaurs of the past. 
Velociraptors and many other dinosaurs will be in it. Basically, it's Jurassic Park, but new. Fantastic Four is a mind-blowing movie. It's a whole new story, but with all the same super abilities. Pitch Perfect 1 was a huge hit. The producers expect Pitch Perfect 2 to be an even bigger success. With a mixture of humor, drama, and amazing singing, this is going to be a great movie to take your special someone to. Mission Impossible is a drama action film with explosions and high-speed car chases. This movie is rated PG-13, so I recommend you see this movie lots of popcorn, friends, and your mom. Ant-Man sounds like another one of those worthless movies that will go down in history books for the worst movie. Well, after watching the trailer, it looks like a disappointment and a waste of money. Marvel should give up and stick to the classics like Spider-Man and Captain America. Minions. Minions is a cute and family friend movie. This movie has great soundtrack and will be full of laughs. This movie is promising and I recommend seeing it. Remember those classic games like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong? They seem harmless and fun. But when they come back to life and fight back against the humans, they aren't so cute and fun anymore. It's Adam Sandler's job to stop the games and save America. Do you like boxing? If you do, this is the movie for you. This is the heartwarming story about a father who's a professional boxer and has the choice between boxing and his family. This is the final Family Theory Review in the history of youth school. You won't be seeing any more Family Theory Reviews. All of this couldn't have been done without Mr. Tyner, the cameraman Ben Gadold, you, and of course, me. This has been the last and final Sun Weekly Review. Rosh Hashanah is a Jewish New Year where everyone gets to temple and has a jolly good time. Because of your browser, maybe not because of your internet or that supposed virus. <laughs> I forgot what the next line was. Just go, just go. Are you? <laughs> On today's show, we have Browser Wars, a rap battle to end all rap battles, printers in 3D, and even some lip-syncing madness. I'm Jack Leinwand, and this is the Sun Liku Review. You took too deep of a breath. <laughs> I know, because I forgot my line. Do it again. Using a terrible browser. Maybe it's not... Stop making no sounds. I was making these sounds. Yes, you were. It's not going to pick up. I don't care. It bothers me. I can hear it. Okay. Three, two, one. Go. No. Two, one, go. Many people don't know it read. Eric Shamal to the front, please. Eric Shamal to the front. It's not my fault. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Here it is. I really hope you cut that out, Mr. Tyner. <coughs> well, hopefully I can use those germ tips on my next holiday trip. I don't want to get my family sick like last year. Anyways, I'm Jack Leinwand, and this is... Ben Gadold. You stupid... You... You forgot... Should put be there. Okay, let's do this again. Three, 